There's two scriptures I'd like for you to look at. First, I'd like for you to turn to Mark 11. The Gospel of Mark. Very familiar scripture for us Word of Faith people that are now an anathema to much of the so-called body of Christ. But when Jesus returns, he'll find faith in me. Amen. Amen. He's not just talking about saving faith. He's talking about working kingdom faith. Amen. Well, Jesus said in Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, Jesus answered. They, they, were, they were talking about dealing with demonic, mount, monumental or mountain-sized issues. Amen. And Jesus answered them and said, have faith in God. Now, we know that in the Greek, it's the, it breaks down to have the God kind of faith. The faith that when you speak, things happen. There's divine energy, creative. Now, listen. Cre- creativity for a different direction can become destructive. Well, I don't, I, I don't understand what you're saying, Pastor. This is what I'm saying. You can create your harmonious future, and call in the covenant-earned, blood-bought kingdom rights that you have in the blood of Jesus, the, for, that the Gentiles might be partakers of the covenant promises of Abraham. He became a curse so that we might become the blessed. Amen? So as we acknowledge that, confess that, call that in, it's creating kingdom blessings in our future amen changing us into the conformity of the image of christ and the conformity of the kingdom of god around us amen now you may not be able to help anybody else but bless god you're responsible to create your own garden your own metron your area of rule as for me and my household we'll serve the lord and walk in his blessings but you turn that around and focus it to the dark realm and deal with principalities and powers and demons, it becomes extremely destructive. See, so so faith is a two-edged sword. Confession is a two-edged sword, and it's supposed to be. Your word here becomes fertilizer and water for the garden of God. Your words here become the sword of the Spirit for the destruction of darkness. Amen. Do you understand? That's why it says guard your mouth that you don't turn the sword against the brethren. And you don't turn the, the, your, 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 your watering and your fertilizing into the darkness. Blessing what God's cursed and cursing what God's blessed. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? So that's why you guard your words. It's meant your, your tongue should have the ability to destroy the right things. It should not destroy kingdom things. Even though sometimes kingdom things do wrong things. Now, hang on a minute. Just stay with me. Well, God's never darkness. I didn't say that. I just said there's things in the spirit. I'm a thing of the spirit. I'm part of kingdom things. You're part of kingdom things. And sometimes kingdom things do wrong things. Amen. Now watch. Have faith in God for truly I say unto you, verily I say unto you, that whatsoever anything... Whatsoever sh- uh, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. It didn't say, that's not a capital H. That's a he, Daryl, and a he, TC, and a he, uh, Thomas, and a he, Darlene, and a he, a temina and a he joy and a he all of us he the kingdom people amen and shall not doubt in his heart but believe that those things which he says not waiting for god to say god's already said it now you repeat it now to agree on earth now we're going somewhere with this amen uh but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he, little h, T.C., shall have whatsoever he, T.C., says. Amen. By the words of your mouth, you're cursed, or by the words of your mouth, you're justified. Hallelujah. 
Whose mouth? My mouth. I'm blessed by my mouth. I'm cursed by my mouth. I'm condemned by my mouth. I'm justified by my mouth. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, you better watch how you talk to God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch closely. He shall have what? Whatsoever, he says. Now listen, God wants you to have what he's put in print, but you're still going to have what you put in print. Did you hear? You're writing your future with your mouth. We're writing his kingdom. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we're, we're putting up a very warped image of the kingdom of God with our mouths. Amen. Well, you never know what God's going to do. Some people get healed. Some don't. God wants some people blessed and other people not. That's just the will. You never know the will. You are warping. A cre- you're reproducing a warped kingdom of God. Amen. You're missing bricks and knocking down walls. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Jesus was very clear. I only say the things I hear my father say. We should only say the things we read our father said. Hallelujah. All right, now watch this. He shall have what? Whatsoever. Whatsoever. It doesn't mean that I can talk this way over here. And I can talk God's way in this area of my life. Are you listening to me? We don't have the right to build my kingdom and his kingdom because a double, a a, a house divided what? That's right. That's right. A a double-minded man is what? Unstable. We just prayed about stability in this turmoil of life that's coming. Stable in an unstable world. Amen? Now, but there's a specific thing the Holy Ghost is wanting to address this morning before we, we turn it over to praise and worship and then get into word with Pastor Darrell. Listen to this. Therefore, because of this, I say unto you, I say unto you, TC, I say unto you, Alan, I say unto you, Joy, because of this, I say unto you, that I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received them. When? When I pray. It's mine when I say amen before I get off my knees symbolically. Amen. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Didn't say might. Didn't say sometimes. Didn't say you never know. Didn't say I'm saying this, but it's a guessing game if it's really going to work for you, Thomas. We created that kingdom with Spirits of religious thinking, denominationalism, bowing to the influence of relatives and other people, exalting that above the knowledge of God. Amen. We make void. It turns to nothing. Well, how does it work for me? Because you've turned it into a zero. It has no effect because you've exalted other opinions above it. Hallelujah. All right, now look over at Matthew 18. So what does that apply to, child of God? Anything involving any of us, about anything or anybody. Amen? Matthew 18, 18, very familiar scripture again. Truly I say unto you, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you bind, not God, Now, do you understand what's going on? All the activity of God's kingdom, good or bad, are getting accomplished or failing to be uh, accomplished, are manifesting or failing to manifesting. All the responsibility is very clearly put in whose hands? Ours. Whatsoever you, Bree, whatsoever you, Pastor Darrell, whatsoever you, child of God, Verily I say unto you that whatsoever you bind, where? On earth. God, don't you see what's going on in this world? Yes. But where did he put the responsibility to deal with that? Now, there are certain things we're looking at where we are now, uh, eschologically, uh, uh, 
in these last days, but in the day-to-day -day activity as we're leading to the days that we cannot stop and a clock we cannot stop, we can contend with faith on how we behave and what we have in, in, that, in the midst of all that. Knowing, that's why he said, when I return, shall I find faith and shall I find you doing? Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. Shall I find faith and shall I find you doing? Hello, occupy till I come. So even though we're not going to stop the march to, to the final day, we're not going to change the time on God's clock. We're not going to divert that in any way. We should be in faith and doing when he comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we see that day approach, we should be more earnestly stirred up in our faith and more proactive in our doing not sit back it's getting close to this coast now and just hide no 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 arise and shine behave how you, watch how you behave let's go back to mark chapter 11 something I, I i he just quickened to me which is the whole point he wanted to address today mark chapter 11 hold your place there in matthew 28 Verse 25. See, this is where a lot of a Matthew 11, 22, 23, and 24 doesn't work because the body of Christ doesn't read 25. And because we don't read 25, we think we can act any way we want. To anybody we want to act that way, we can lie, break covenant, be selfish, do whatever we want, and claim God said. Come on. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Watch 25. And when you stand praying, what, what, do you, what do you mean when? The, the when he just covered about you getting what you want. That same time while you're saying, amen, I believe it's mine. Before I get off my knees again, forgive. Amen. See, we, we, we claim a bunch of stuff while we're in resentment toward one another. Arguing with one another. And we're wondering, well, see, that faith stuff don't work. While you're in faith, but you only have faith to the level that you're walking clean. You can't be arguing with people, attacking people, hating one another, thinking God's got no problem with that. Watch what he said here. This mountain moving faith absolutely works, but you've got to be in the faith position to allow it to, to contend and keep working for you. Faith position, Pastor, I'm glad you. It's the forgiveness ground, a clean heart toward man and God ground, a loving, forgiving heart ground. Amen. Faith ground is a clean heart of forgiveness ground. Not saying what you want to say because you want to make your point, hurt the brethren, cause a little pain because you're the right. Somebody say amen. And when you stand praying, what? Forgive. Notice the last thing he said that wasn't stay in faith. It was stay in forgiveness. Amen. How, you'd be surprised how your faith will explode when you hold nothing against anybody. And you don't exalt yourself as judge above anybody. Well, Pastor, I hear you dealing with stuff. I deal with stuff. I never try to bring somebody down. I'm dealing with stuff. I'm dealing with sin, not attacking the person. So we got to address sin is not right, hoping the vessel that's sinning repents. Hallelujah. And he won't repent putting a seal of okay on the sin. But he, he will repent if he knows that you identify he's in sin, but I'm ready to forgive you as soon as you come to yourself and ask for it. You can't forgive somebody that hasn't even any conviction that they're sinning. Did you hear me? I don't want to go too long. And when you stand at the very same time, forgive if you have any ought against any, that your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Now, that's not uh, go along to get along forgiveness. Well, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll just do it to make everybody happy or to look like I'm loving 
or to act like I'm leading in the Spirit. No, it's got to be from your heart. From your heart. And most of the time, I'm going to tell you something the truth, because I was crying a lot last night because God was dealing with me for, with this, not because I was in unforgiveness, but because of the state of the church. Not this church, the body of Christ. Most of the time, when you really are wanting somebody forgiven, you can't do that without tears in your eyes. It will bring a compassion out in you. Well, just forgive them. You, don't, you haven't even forgiven them yourself yet. Until it seizes you to where you, honest to God, are broken because they are bound up and take that brokenness to God on their behalf, you're not really in, a, in forgiveness yet. I'm just telling you the God's truth. Our faith and our forgiveness is very cavalier. Well, I just claim it by faith. Until you can't live without it, you're not really in creative faith yet. And until forgiveness bends you in compassion with tears, you're not in forgiveness yet. Hallelujah. Now, that's a lot better than you'll realize right now, but please meditate on it and watch this later, okay? That your, that your Father also, also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your... Now, isn't it interesting? It's, it's, Jesus is making it a given. You need forgiveness. He didn't say might if you need it, that he may forgive you also. Did you hear me? So he's automatically putting us in the boat. We all need forgiveness. And if we're so screwed up, we can't see anywhere in our lives we need to forgive. Now we're in deception. Well, I'm the righteousness of God. Yeah, but your skin ain't. And your brain ain't. Your spirit man is. And I ain't met nobody so spiritually engulfed in the presence of God. There's absolutely no sin. And if you're not, if, if 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 the Holy Ghost can't light it up fairly quickly to you, you're now you're walking with a, a new friend. He's called the spirit of deception. Now, I'm just to keep from crying right now. Hallelujah! Now go back over to Matthew 18, because none of this works until we're in absolute forgiveness one toward another. We're not deceiving ourselves or trying to fake God out. And we come to this in faith. Now, in faith, clean with forgiveness, a true forgiveness for the brethren. Please hear me. This is critical teaching for these end time days. Now that, now that that's right in me, now I can come over to this realm where now I can start binding and it works. Well, I bound that devil, bound that devil, devil, bless God. I don't know why God's not moving in that jerk's life. Well, you just said it out of your own mouth. You've got resentment toward him. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're so unrenewed, we think we can diddle around with, with two minds and think it's all going to work out for me. Hallelujah. Now, I didn't say we never say anything wrong, but be quick to repent. You're going to have occasions daily. That's why it came up with Peter. He said, whoa, Jesus, are you serious? How many times do I got to forgive this jerk? Seven times? In a day? There's nobody in this church that's forgiven me seven times in one day. And Jesus said, seven times, 70 daily. Now, that's the kind of repented heart you need to have. I, sorry, word of faith, people. One red letter doesn't wipe out the other red letter. So you can't take your faith phrases and walk, wipe out the repentance phrases, the forgiveness phrases. It's in state keeping that ground clean that you're able to stay in faith and start really, truly binding and loosing, moving the kingdoms. You can't move the kingdom any farther than you can move yourself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again, I say unto you that if 
two of you shall agree on earth as touching what? Anything. As what? Anything. It shall be done. Not might, not maybe, not sometimes. So if you're living in maybe sometimes still, it's because we still sometimes keep our heart right. We sometimes are clean enough to have faith. Hallelujah. Now see, I'm a faith person, but I'm not a, I'm not a flaky faith person. God created everything because God didn't have to check his heart. God speaks, boom, it's done. Why? Because there's no unrighteousness in him. Why couldn't we cast him out? Because of your unbelief or because of your lack of faith. Why? Because that's the same guy that said, want me to call down lightning and burn him up, Lord? Still had anger, resentment, arrogance, pride in him. And Jesus said, no, Peter, you don't know what spirit you're of. Hallelujah. There's only one righteous judge, that's Jesus. Now, I'm making a point here. There's only one righteous judge, at every, and he, he made it very clean. I only do what's reflected from the Father to do. I only say what I hear the Father say. I have no will of my own lifting up inside me. I have no other agenda working in me. I came. To do the Father's will. My meat is to do His will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, was, he, was, he was crucified 33 years before He got to the cross. He was crucified at least three years before He went to the cross because He crucified Himself 40, 40 days of fasting face to face with Satan. He came back a dead man to his will. Now he had to contend, he had to make his body go there. But in his heart, that was already accomplished. He was crucified what? From the foundations of the world. He was crucified the second he stepped up off the throne and said, I'll go, Father. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a, a thing to be obtained to be in the likeness of God, but humbled himself and became like a man, and even unto the point of death. That all happened while, while he's still in the throne room. He humbled himself and stepped down. It was just this he had to drag to the cross. Glory to God. Now, I'm saying that to say this. I'm very broken hearted. And I mean very broken hearted. I came down from my office last night into the kitchen where Darlene was. She was doing dishes and doing the, uh, as anointed and godly as she is, she still does the, the wife stuff at home. She was, keeps a clean house and an orderly house and, does the dishes, and she was in the kitchen doing the dishes, and I do dishes too, but she was down there doing what looks like non-kingdom stuff, but when you do the domestic stuff with kingdom heart, it's very kingdom-centered. When you do the domestic stuff and resentment and technical obedience, is very fleshly-centered, and that's what turns your house into a garden or it turns your house into a wrestling ring. Hallelujah. So I came down. I was up in my study, spirit, talking to God, listening to the Holy Spirit, meditating on the, the events of, of this time that we live in, and brokenness and sorrow came on me, and I was weeping for a while. She didn't know that, but I was crying for quite a while. And I came down to the kitchen, and she goes, what do you need? I said, I just need a hug. She goes, why? I said, I just need a hug. And I just needed a hug i needed somebody to hug me and reinforce this flesh because my spirit man's heart is broken <sighs> hallelujah and what's breaking is 
like, oh, isn't that nice? He's got a prophet's ministry. You don't know how hard it is to really see things you don't want to see. You don't know how hard it is to see things and things that you know before you open your mouth. Nobody wants to hear it. I don't know how long ago it was, but I've said it for several years since we were at Vickery Meadows that there's going to be many, many ministers fall that you would have swore would never fall. I said then that there's going to be people in our church that will break covenant with us and they'd be the last people you would ever expect to walk out the door. Every bit of that's come to pass each time breaking my heart deeper and deeper. It's not a matter of just what God showed me. Ha, ha, ha. No, if, if, if that's your attitude, God will stop showing you things. And the more he shows you is based on how much of his heart you have. And he takes no joy when somebody falls. It's not a matter of, see, I told you, I don't want to see, and I don't want to have to tell you. But I have to tell you. And just so far this year, Brother Jakes has had to step down. More and more gross sin coming out. Amen? And, and then right, right, just, just, uh, then it was, uh, uh, hang on a minute. It was just, what, last week, Brother Tony Evans. You would have never dreamed that in a natural, ever. That, prob- that man right there probably would have been the last on your list to ever think that ministry would fail. But it did. Why? Because the hidden things are, are not hidden to God. Now, that's tragic enough. Then I find out Brother Robert Morris was revealed as having committed very, very gross sin. But in his case, listen to me, and this is what broke my heart so bad for over an hour last night in prayer. He, he and his wife said this was over 35 years ago, and they are destroying the man on YouTube. He needs to step down. He's just, it was 35 years ago, people. Now, this is what God wants me to address. Watch that the, sword, the word of blessing, you're not turning it to a sword of destruction against the brethren. You, you talk about love, love, love. Brother T, you're too hard. And now you won't forgive a man for a sin 35 years old? That's not love. That's not restoration. That's not acceptable. And I'm here to rebuke it. Watch your mouths. Watch what you say. Now, if it happened last week, okay, but God, restore them. God, forgive them. God, let them see that they might bring seven times more people to the kingdom than what Satan thought he was going to steal. Amen. There's people to this day, 40 years later, will not forgive him with all the stuff he's gone on to do, with all the stuff that he's walked righteously 40 years later. Well, Jimmy Swagger. And you're, you call yourself more loving than T.C. Hudgens that stands up here and rebukes without hesitation? I just addressed our fellowship, uh, ministerial fellowship, and said if, you, if, if it was even, we made a covenant here. I made a covenant with all of you that I don't care what your past holds. If you repented, I, I, I am not going to disavow you. I'm not going to set you aside. I'm not going to act like you're offending my reputation. I'm standing with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the body of Christ is hypocritical, judgmental, waving the love flag while they eat one another, and I'm sick of it in Jesus' name. Amen. You need to repent. You need to shut your mouth. Pray for forgiveness in Jesus' name. I'm not saying it was it was bad. I'm not even going to repeat it. He he committed gross sin 35 years ago. Now, when does a man earn restoration and forgiveness? When are you allowed to go on with God? Well, he can go on as long as he's not in a pulpit. Folks, under your so-called agape-loving, double-minded, two-tongued garbage, hypocritical, 
filth, there wouldn't be anybody in a pulpit. There's none righteous without Christ, period. John MacArthur or anybody that shakes the flag of Christianity like they're beyond it. They're not. And we may never see it, but they may go home and act like demons at home. They might still be cheating in Texas. We don't know. You better walk in forgiveness, walk in reality, walk in truth. Now, I, now if you can't forgive somebody 35 years later, you need some prayer time on your face. Amen, brother. Come on. You talk about the love of God, the forgiveness of God, except if he's a mega pastor. Now, I'm talking last week. Okay, we'll deal with that. A couple of months ago with Brother Jake's, okay, it's time to deal with that. But 35 years later, and you'll bring Jimmy Swaggart into all your videos too, 40 years later, shame on you. You need to take that filth off the Internet in Jesus' name. Now, you know... How many of you sinned since last Sunday? Don't, don't sugarcoat it. Raise your hands real high if, 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 if you're in that boat. Pastor Darlene's the only one that didn't sin since last Sunday. I'm telling you right now, folks, that whatever your little sin was is just as filthy in God's eyes as what this man did 35 years ago, what this man did last week, what this other man did a month ago. There's no such thing as, well, that's a worse sin than this. The only worse sin is blaspheming the Holy Ghost. That's the only sin Jesus said he will not forgive now or later. Other than that, you better get off your high horse. You better shut your self-righteous mouth, repent, and pray for these brothers, and pray for restoration, and pray for healing in the body of Christ instead of exposing your filth all over the body of Christ Amen. in Jesus name Amen. well you're too hard Pastor TC only the hypocrites I'm extremely compassionate to people I don't even trust somebody that doesn't walk with a limp because all that means is your self righteousness is hiding it everybody has the limp of, of, of carnality of inability to stay straight in their lives Everybody's got the Jacob limp. They just hide it or they don't hide it. I don't trust anybody that doesn't limp in the spirit. Amen? You tell me you have nothing to repent of, I'm telling you, you are deceived by a demon. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, Father, we come together. The whole purpose of this. Each one of these men, I believe with all my heart, deep down inside their soul, they love you, Jesus. I know that. I know Brother Jakes started out doing a good work. I know Brother Evans has labored in righteousness before you for decades. I know that Brother Morris has labored and built. I can only imagine how many thousands of times he's wept and said, Dear God, forgive me for that. Year after year after year. Now, Father God, we come before you on behalf of these men. Not boasting, not cheering, not gleeful, but brokenhearted knowing that, but for the grace of God, there we go. First of all, Father God, forgive each one of us of our sins, our limitations of the flesh, our, even our inability to recognize our sins. Forgive us, Father. Wash us clean. Whatever we've done in the past up till now, we don't want people to see it. We don't want it all over the Internet. We don't want people to gleefully dance all over our, our lives. Forgive us, Father, and put it under the blood. And now we come to you on behalf of these brothers, their wives, their families, that are so brokenhearted right now. 
that they see their lives and years and years of working for your glory crumbling in their very hands. Father, we ask you to stay the flow of destruction in their lives. We plead the blood of Jesus, not just to cleanse, but to heal in their hearts, in their minds, in their relationships. Sometimes, somehow, the body of Christ has got to stop throwing its laundry to the filthy wolves, Father God. Somehow stop the proliferation and cannibalism of your leaders. Let it be dealt with in love behind the veil of grace. And there are even those that say, no, it should be exposed. I'm not talking about concealing the matter. I'm talking about veiling it from the heathen. There's a big difference, Father, and you know it. Let the body of Christ see honest kingdom restoration. Honest, pure kingdom forgiveness. And Father, if this man has walked righteously before you for 35 years, he still has a great reward from you. Brother Swaggart has, Swaggart has walked 40 years clean and righteous before you, building a great ministry, television ministry, Bible church. Yes, they repented. You restore, you heal, and you'll still use them. But keep the adversary off of them that they might be healed, Father, in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. I believe with all my heart the Lord wanted to address that today.